So for the past few months, this portable lamp has been our only source of light during the dark nights. But that's about to change this week. I'm Eugenia and this is Pepe, Aspen and Lolita. We are an architect and a designer that moved to the countryside to self-build our new home. After traveling for a year in our self-converted camper van, we decided to settle in. Looking to live a simpler life, grow our own organic food and build our house, let us hear. Thank you for watching, liking and subscribing. Yesterday we received our solar kit system and uh, we are very excited about it because that will mean that we will have electricity at night, something that we haven't had for a long time right now. Once that the truck arrived and opened the back, we realized that the solar panels were loaded vertically with the wooden pallets and all and immediately thought that all the solar panels were going to be broken. After months of research from Pepe's side, we decided to go with a kit that had a really good price quality ratio that consisted in 5 solar panels, a 5.3 kW lithium battery at 48 volts, an inverted of 5000 watts, along with all the cables and the different material that we needed for the installation. So this is the battery, it's a huge battery and very very well finished and very impressed with how it looks with the quality and of the build to be honest. It came with these two handles which I uh, was a little bit afraid because it weighs almost like 50 kilograms so I wasn't sure if, if we were going to be able to move it but then when I open it I saw that they has these handles. We have decided to put a vertical inside there but uh, right now it's, uh, it's a mess we will we need to remove all this all this wood and all this material out this is uh the plate that goes on on the wall in case you want to mount it on the wall not sure if i'm gonna use it this is lolita uh, she already inspected the material and is very happy very pleased with it so she's gonna sleep a little bit here with the with the inverter right this guy is the inverter solar uh, solar controller mppt solar controller also a battery charger that you can you can connect to the grid or to a generator uh 5000 watts which is pretty much more than what we need a few breakers for the for the circuit and then they also provided uh, this box a couple of com communication cables that i really have no clue how they work right now i think this is to connect the battery to the inverter but i don't know we will we need to study the documentation and then here we have uh, five well four in this case 410 watts solar panels and they are monocrystalline for now i think we're gonna install them here temporarily temporarily for now, pretty much just race from the floor looking to the sun because we're gonna be actually building a greenhouse here where the where the van is. The van is gonna move away 
uh, we're gonna park it somewhere else in the in the property. The decision of going off-grid hasn't been easy for us because the experience that we had while we were living in our camper van full-time for two years was that after the first year of use, our battery died. We could only use electricity during the sunny hours. And we now realize that we made a mistake by not buying a lithium battery back then. The EGM battery that we bought for the van can actually only be discharged to around 60% of the total capacity. So it means that if you discharge deeper than 60%, you damage the battery. So it loses capacity over the time. And that, that doesn't happen as much with lithium batteries. The one that we bought for the coming, you can discharge it to 100% for around 7,800 cycles. So it means we're gonna have a battery for like 25 years easy. Alright guys, we already came up with an idea of how we are setting up the solar system because this cabinet is, a, is the one that we want to use as, a, as I said earlier. We're gonna raise it up a couple of centimeters so it has some airflow in the, in the bottom. Once we put it on top of that piece of wood, we're gonna secure it, this on the back of it. So that way we rest it on the floor and it's also gonna be connected to the wall in this bracket that uh, they, they supply with the battery. That's, that way kind of, it kind of tilt over and, and fall. If you like this cabin and are planning on building something similar, remember that we have the architectural and structural kits available in our website. With all the plans, details and material info you could ever need to build this same cabin, including the 3D model. Link in the description below. Alright, in we go for the last time. This is a three uses in one is solar controller, inverter, and a charger. Uh, this will go up here on top of the battery uh, attached to the wall. And then uh, the circuit breaker, which is super bulky, but uh, actually I kind of like it right now because we're gonna put it right there, close to the other one. So we will have just cables coming in this corner and then in and out from that corner. Uh, so everything is gonna be tidy and, and neat. So we already decided, once again, this is going back to here. I will drill two holes, one hole here in the bottom for this big cable to come in, go inside the fuse box and then out. And I will just use that one for one of the cables of the solar panel to go in, get broken here with this fuse and then 
out. out while I'm dealing with the with the cables. Tonight I'm gonna study the diagram that the, the kit comes with um, to make sure I connect them properly and um, yeah so tomorrow probably we'll have this thing connected. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, to connect the solar panels because I'm missing a couple of nuts to make a structure for it but um, I think I'm gonna leave this connected and then move on to installing the solar panels in the temporal space. We have actually been struggling very much during the whole year building this cabin without electricity. We have been 100% off grid. We have had the solar panels from the van, but the battery is just dead. So any cloudy days like today or at night, we didn't have any electricity. And uh, to be honest with you guys, we have been struggling very much with cold and, and rainy days. And not being able to, to turn the lights on, charge the laptop, turn the, the fridge on, and even, even the basic heater that the, that the van has. So many nights have been spent in the van, close to the stove, open, trying to get a little bit of heat after a, after a full day of really cold and wet work, you know. We have been out of our comfort zone pretty much the whole year. And it's super nice to finally be able to get back some comforts like basic electricity. So yeah, we cannot wait to, to get this system installed. This is the positive cable that the battery came with. Pretty good stuff. It came already with the terminals uh, installed and I'm ready to go. Uh, right now I'm gonna go ahead here, put it there and measure where I need to cut it and I will go on the outside to cut it. Before I connect anything to the battery, I read that it's good to actually double check that there is no voltage if you connect uh, both terminals, even though the battery is off. So just, I'm gonna just make sure that uh, this like that before I connect that first cable. Now I'm gonna connect the first positive cable to this positive terminal of the battery. I'm sorry, the lighting is not perfect. So I already have connected the first cable going to this fuse box and then I'm gonna go down from the fuse box through this hole as well and then into the inverter terminal. We decided to install the battery and the inverter inside the closet temporarily because we are planning on building a greenhouse that we hold all the solar system there. But the first few weeks of use um, we wanted to check the, how the sound level was and the heat dissipation.
positive cables are installed and now I'm gonna go with the negative. Uh, this is goes from the battery directly to the to the inverter. Piece of cake because there is no fuse in between. This is the solar cable that uh, right now I'm putting the positive. Uh, connected to the inverter and then to the fuse box and after that I'm gonna leave it like that because I would like to install the solar panels in the temporary location and then run a cable to the to the dimension that I need. I don't wanna cut them short and then miss a couple of centimeters. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. The positive of the solar cable is here. It will be cut by this fuse, which is missing right now, as I said before, because I don't want, I don't want it to be connected as, until, until I want to. And then I will just missing this cable. This positive will go here, over here on the right to the wall, and out of the house through that pipe that I have here. The first few days, the fans from the inverter were always running and we got a bit scared because it was quite loud but then realized that after the first battery cycle, they turned off and only turned on during heavy loads. Same with the temperature, we had temperatures above 40 Celsius degrees during the summer and the closest temperature stayed cool during the entire summer. In the middle of the week, Pepe realized that we needed to buy more material to finish the electrical installation so we continue with other open projects that we had, like the installation of the water heater. Yesterday I was able to install the water heater. So that means that we already have hot water inside the cabin. It was a very easy installation. Um, you basically have three connections underneath the water heater. One is for the cold water to go in. Another one is for the hot water to go out. And a third one that is for the gas to go inside the water heater. That's basically it. You just need to connect all the pipes and have it running. In terms of settings, we have two dials. One is for the temperature of the water and another one is for how much water you want to go through the system. So basically we have both set to the minimum and it's working quite well. So that means that we have a clear path in order to continue working on the exterior shower and, and hopefully we can get that done soon too.
Good morning, everybody. These past months, I have been working on getting this part of the garden ready. And finally, today, I'm able to show you the final result of it. This part of the land was full of weeds and after many days of working the soil, adding compost and a bit of creativity. We turn it into this abandoned garden full of color bees and food. Many of you have asked how we designed the garden to look pretty and productive at the same time, so I wanted to jump in very really quickly to explain you the basic things that we did here. The technique that we use to plant is the square foot garden, meaning that we cultivate by a square foot. For us, this technique is really helpful because we are able to grow a big variety of things without needing much space. And it also helps the garden to look pretty at the same time because we always combine uh, vegetables with flowers and herbs. One year ago, I had no idea about gardening and the idea of growing everything that is here, it was quite overwhelming because I didn't know how I was going to do it. But I have to say that it's quite amazing how everything turned out. <laughs> 